Live from New York City, it's The Cube at Big Data NYC 2014. Brought to you by headline sponsor, WAN Disco, with support from EMC, MarkLogic, and Teradata. With hosts, Dave Vellante and Jeff Kelly. We're back. We are here with Todd Goldman, who's the Vice President of Enterprise Data Integration at Informatica. We're talking data, we're talking data integration. Todd, welcome to theCUBE, good yeah, to have you. Yeah, it's great to be here. So, it's a data week. Yes, uh, big, gonna, data, big data week. Yeah, and, uh, and, and it's crazy over at the Javits. We understand it's pretty packed. Uh, yeah, over, venue. 000, over 5,000 people there. A lot so. of action, and um, I'm mean, going to just get right into it. We were, we were talking offline at our event yesterday. Jeff Kelly presented some information and uh, we asked our customers what's the number one, you know, so what, what's the tool sets you have for your big data initiatives? The number one tool set that came up was an initiative was data integration yep. off and the charts. And you were saying, well, a year ago it would have been different. What's year, your take on that? Yeah, I think that what's happened is people have gone from sandbox environments where they're playing with the stuff and maybe using one or two sources that they put into Hadoop and then say, and then they play with that and they can do all this in hand coding. And now it's gotten a little bit more difficult. And I, I, I make an analogy to my teenage daughters who leave their clothes all over the house. So they've got their clothes all over the house and I tried the strategy where I said, okay, they're not putting the clothes away. I'm gonna take all the clothes, this mess that they've created that's extended all over my house into the car. I'm gonna take all that stuff, I'm gonna dump it onto their bed in their bedroom and then they're going to put it away. They're going to they're going to organize and put it away. And of course, I went from having a distributed mess to a co-located mess. It was not put away, it wasn't cleaned up. And the same thing's true I think with Hadoop and that's what they realize where there's a big advantage with Hadoop where I don't have to have a schema. I don't have to worry about the data structure going into Hadoop, but that doesn't mean it's integrated. And I think they confuse this idea that I could in the old days you'd take your data out of your operational data operational uh, database and then you'd put it in the warehouse, you'd have to restructure it. So you needed E, you need to extract it, you need the T, you need to transform it, and then you need to load it. You had to transform it just to load it and get a star schema and get a structure that was that was highly readable for doing reporting. Well in Hadoop you don't have that. So everyone said, oh, you don't need data integration anymore. You don't need ETL. Well then they put 10 data sources in there and they realize, well wait a minute, in order for me to actually start querying this and get analytics out of it, I have one system that, you know, simple example, but one system that's got social security number in three columns and another system that's in one column. Well, before I combine all that data together, why don't I, I need to normalize that so social security system's all the same, I can combine the data, then I can start analyzing that. And you multiply that by every attribute, every system, it gets complicated really fast. So they're realizing, oh yeah, I've, I've got to apply some of the old thinking to this new environment. I love the analogy, so not, not only because I have teenage daughters, but, but it's so true, because. Did yeah, that work for you? You got it, it did, <laughs> because I'm picturing, well, I know my daughter, she's got to fold the clothes, and she goes to the drawer, her drawer has to be reorganized, because it's all a mess, and I don't have time for this, so it just, it stays there, it goes on the floor, and, and, and take that into a, that metaphor into data, you know, I might, might not have the place to put it, I don't have the structure, I don't have time for that. I'm, the bombs are dropping all around me, the boss is coming down, <laughs> something just went wrong. I don't have time to organize yeah, and it. I, and I think that's the whole thing though, that people are moving from this you know, ad hoc world to how do I operationalize this process? And to operationalize the process, it means that I've got to know, well, what data do I have where? Are my sweaters in the sweater drawer? Are the pants in the pants drawer? If mom comes in or her sister comes in and wants to borrow a sweater, but it's on the floor. She's got to you know, go through all that stuff and find it. And the same thing's true with data, but a thousand, hundred thousand times worse because there's so much of it. So if it's if it's if there's lineage, if there's metadata to track, where is the information that's sitting in my Hadoop repository? Then I can then somebody else can come in and share that information. And if also if I've taken five data sources and I've combined it together in some interesting way and I've cleansed it along the way, and then you know, Jeff over here comes along and wants to use that he can see that, oh, Todd's cleaned it all up. I'm not going to take all that raw data. I'm going to start from Todd's nice, clean repository that he's taken my data swamp and he's created a nice, clean data lagoon. I'm going to take something from the data lagoon and maybe you'll add to it, mm -hmm. but at least that way, for you to decide that you trust it, you're going to look at, well, what's the lineage of mm -hmm. the data in that lagoon? Do I trust that lineage? Has Todd cleaned it? Can I see that process? And these are the kinds of things that if you hand code everything, 
it's very hard to figure that out. And this is where tooling comes in and, and visualization of these environments come in. And, and this was true with you know, classic data warehouses. The issue is that that process to, to prototype and build took too long. With Hadoop, that process to prototype is just completely shrunk. And so I can go from, I can prototype much more quickly, but then I have to think about, well, how am I going to then make that prototype repeatable? How am I going to make it yeah. so that other people can use that information? Well, Todd, we were talking uh, earlier a little bit about what you're seeing in terms of this transition from a lot of the code jockeys at Hadoop World, uh, and now you're seeing more kind of business conversations and conversations around things like governance. So are you seeing that shift? Are we starting to, I mean, cross the chasm is one way to put it, but are we starting to move, do you think, from that early adopter POC phase to, the, to more of these uh, POCs moving to production? Yeah, so I think there are a couple shifts that are happening. One shift have to, has to do with how development is happening, where you had a lot of hand coding being done, where the skill set required to do that work was, was pretty high. I was just at dinner last night with a number of customers, and, and one major credit card company said, wow, this Hadoop stuff's really hard. Mm -hmm. It was fine for our code, our, you know, our very core small team to hand code this, but when we start pushing this out to our business units, these guys aren't capable of this. So they're, they're looking now at how do we have graphical tools make, make development more accessible. I mean, I think of it like, how many people would like to use a Macintosh and actually go to the Unix operating system running underneath? Everybody wants, everyone uses the graphical interface. The same thing with Hadoop. I know a guy, gonna, actually. Yeah, <laughs> and, there's, but, and, and by the way, that's not going to end here either, right? That's still going to be true. So there's an increase in accessibility, so there are more developers mm -hmm. who can do, in, in our case, I mean, we hide that complexity of, of data integration, so somebody who knows, we have over, uh, over 100,000 Informatica developers that, that are out there doing data integration in our classic environment, mm -hmm. you know, all those people, they're already Hadoop developers, they just don't know it. They can use that same graphical mm -hmm. development environment and say, oh, I want to run that that logical integration. I want to run mm -hmm. that directly on Hadoop. So that's one part, is making it more accessible. Mm -hmm. And the other part is just the operationalization of once I've made it more accessible, how do I know when I have to, make, when I have to handle things like change management? Um, who's affected downstream by this change? Is there a report sitting in MicroStrategies or Tableau or, or, uh, you know, or business objects? Is there a report that the CEO is depending on and if I change something, some, change some attribute that's feeding that, I better make sure that I know that what the downstream impact of making mm -hmm. a change in some upstream piece of data is. And you know, once again, hand coding that creates a problem. So tools like lineage, um, the ability to have metadata management and clear lineage from the source all the way to the target consumer, uh, mm -hmm. it becomes more important. And trust is a big part of that. Do I trust this information? Because I think we can very quickly, Hadoop has a lot of advantages, but we can very quickly end up where we did with data warehouses where People threw a lot of junk in there. You've got to, and I don't know, it's like the clothing in my kid's room again. I don't know what clothing is clean mm -hmm. and what clothing they just looked at, tried on, decided, you know, I don't want to wear this today and threw it on the floor. There's some yeah. organization that's required there. Well, so th well, let's, let's squint through this a little bit. So, you know, we hear in this space, uh, in the big data, the Hadoop world, that it's no longer ETL, it's more the, 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 the letters of turns, E L T. -T. Yeah. So, so talk a bit, is it, talk about that a little bit. Is it just a matter of just moving the, the, just arranging the chess pieces a little different, or is there a fundamentally different approach to the T, to the transformation when you're doing that in a system like Hadoop versus the old model where you would, you know, bring it out to an Informatica environment, do the T, and then load into the data warehouse. What's, what's, how does the T change, not yeah. just in, in, in the acronym, but in, in reality? So, yeah, so, what, so the logical part of the T doesn't change, right? The, I've got five different data sources, and I want to maybe create a, I want to combine it together to do something interesting with it. I still have to make sure there's consistency of that, of that data so that dates are all the same format, that social security is all the same format, that data is formatted in a way that's consistent. So that's one part, but then, what's the compute engine that's being used to do the T? So in the old days, the compute engine was Informatica's own engine that ran on its own compute farm. Now, the idea, and, and you'd bring the data to the compute farm, and then you'd load it somewhere. Now, the data's already sitting on the compute farm, it's sitting on Hadoop. You've got the storage and the computation tied together, mm -hmm. so you're pushing down that transformation logic to run on Hadoop. Now, this idea ex has existed before people talk about push down optimization where, where even Informatic would take some of our logic and we'd push it down to an Oracle system or push it down to Teradata. Mm -hmm. The difference is that 
we were pushing down SQL, and the language of SQL was much more confined than what we can do in Hadoop, so maybe we could push down 30% of the instruction set to run on, on Oracle or, or on Teradata. With Hadoop, we can push down about 95% of the instruction set of things that we can do in our, in our own, uh, in our own system on our own engine, we can push 95% of that down onto Hadoop, and we think eventually we'll be able to, uh, to do 100% there. Because mm -hmm. you really don't want to, once it's in Hadoop, you don't want to move the data out of it, you want to push the processing to the data, not the other way around. Right. So, so the big advantage there is just, I don't have to move the data, um, and, I get, and I get that distributed compute power, so I get, I get the same kind of scaling. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, I mean, you made a very good point. I mean, one of the central tenets is you, you, big data is heavy, and you don't want, you don't want to move it around, as, the least amount of movement as possible. Um, and so, taking a step back, I mean, how does that impact a vendor like data, uh, Informatica, whose business is about moving data from point A to point B? And it sounds like the approach is we'll push down some of that capability into the so, repository. So, so that's a fallacy that I want to correct. So you're saying, Beautiful. because cause our business really, so it is partly about moving data from point A to point B, and but that's only one part of it. Mm -hmm. So you still have to extract data from the ori original source right. systems. Mm -hmm. So that's something that's still going to be important. Legacy mm -hmm. systems never go away. So the E will still exist, and that's something that turns out to be harder than most people think because you know, getting to data in an SAP system is actually a non-trivial problem because <laughs> you actually have to understand something about the data structure. Yeah. So that part still exists. You've got to move it in. But the other part that's been really critical for our business has been the T. And the T is how do I, once again, get data consistency, but then how do I get things like the cleansing of the data? How do I make sure that, how do I profile what's in there? How do I identify, let's say there are missing values. Mm -hmm. well, where are those missing values? Um, how do I then append the information in that system or in that data mm -hmm. to, f to fill out the blank values? So you know, things like names and addresses are a classic example. But just data quality in general, I might have a set of data quality rules. So in financial services, they'll have, they'll have certain expectations of how certain financial instruments should relate to each other. Mm -hmm. And they'll set up a set of data quality rules that will say, well, if this value is more than 5x that value, so that should raise a flag and somebody mm -hmm. should get alerted about that. Well, they can code all that in our system um, with, in a graphical way without having to, once again, into actual mm -hmm. physical coding. So anything that, that involves manipulation of that data and transformation of that data, you know, short of actually doing analytic type queries, mm -hmm. people have been doing that in Informatica for years. It's yeah. just that now, um, once again, you're, you're loading it first and right. then doing the transformation, but the, but the transformation's still happening. Mm -hmm. and, and you want to make it so that you don't have to have a pig hive developer do that. Right. Which is the other big issue. Because there are, there are not enough smart people in the world um, to, to do to this work. And, yeah. and there's new technologies emerging every day uh, in this space. And, and that's going to continue to happen. So, so the, the goal, it sounds like, is to allow Informatica professionals, people that have used Informatica in the more traditional world, to migrate their skills to this new world, right. again, through the kind of this graphical user interface approach. Right, and even people who aren't Informatica users, mm -hmm. I would argue it's still a lot easier for them to use this graphical yeah, approach, then, then and then learning Pig, yeah. Hive, and, and then whatever's going to come next, right. what it, what it, Spark. Absolutely, and, and the data quality component, I think, is really interesting, and one that gets overlooked a lot, because I think some people think, well, okay, it's big data, and the volume of the data can, can make up for some of the, the poor quality, because when, when you have data at such volume, it can, you, you, you have enough volume that you can overcome some little discrepancies. But the reality is if you're trying to get down to a, in a big data space, we, we talked about last night on our, our panel discussion we had here about you know, a segment of one. You want to treat a customer as, you know, that, specifically that customer. You want to know everything about that customer. If you have a data quality problem there, that can be a, a major problem. Well, if, if it happens to be you have a data quality <coughs> problem and it happens to be in my $10 million account, <laughs> and it's off by a million dollars, I'm going to be pretty upset about yeah. that, right? Yeah. So I think this is the, the, the idea that, that your data quality disappears because mm -hmm. it just becomes noise is, is true in a very limited set of cases. I used to work for America Online, mm -hmm. and you have this very long tail of searches. So that's true for Google, right? The long tail, you may not care as much about that long tail, but for the rest of industry where I have customers who have problems and issues and accounts, and if I lose their transaction, they're going to be upset, uh, I can't afford a data quality problem there. Yeah. How much of, I hear the, the big theme at the event this year is the Hadoop comes to the enterprise, or the enterprise yeah. comes to Hadoop is probably a better way to say yes. it. Yes. And what I'm hearing is anecdotally is uh, the Hadoop guys are saying, and actually we hear this in the Wikibon community too, this is the technology that you use, here's how you do it, the DevOps guys say, hey, follow us and the enterprise 
IT folks are saying, well, wait a minute, hold on. We have processes, we have governance, right. we have data quality, edicts. Um, let's collaborate on this. And now sometimes it's... Right, but you know, there's a great report ahead. about this that MIT Sloan and Capgemini did where they talk exactly about that. Mm -hmm. And it turns out that if you do just one or the other, you'll do marginally better. If you do governance only, but don't invest in new technology like Hadoop, you will improve your profitability, but your revenue will go down. And if you do just Hadoop, but you don't govern it, your revenue goes up, but your profitability <laughs> yeah, goes down. Yeah, yeah. So if you do both, you get the combination. And if, when I look at our customers that are the most successful, it's if I, the ones who just do Hadoop and don't figure out how to have, how to operationalize it and create repeat projects, mm -hmm. they get a little bit of a bump of, oh, we have this great project, but now they've got to roll it out to the rest of the organization and they can't. Um, so when they can, when IT... And they can't because it's, there's, there's no governance, there's no data quality, there's just... Well, and, and they're stuck with this little tiny team yeah. that has to be a super duper set of experts as well, so it's the combination... Uh, and it doesn't scale. And doesn't right. scale, yeah. so you've got that combination. Mm -hmm. And the opposite's true too, where you over govern, you completely hamper the creativity uh, of up. the guys who are trying to do the dupe. <laughs> so the ones who, I mean this is true for lots of organizations, the ones who have a better culture where they can combine innovation with good governance, they get the best benefit. And it's a, it's a hard trick to do, but it, it's just in turning the mindset around of thinking, those guys are idiots because they don't get my Hadoop thing, or those guys are idiots because they don't understand the or governance. Or they're irresponsible. Or, yeah, yeah right. they, instead of, yeah. In, you look at it and say, okay, I see that point of view, I understand why they're saying what they're saying, now how can I, how can I at least take a step towards them because I can see the benefit for my organization by doing that. And those companies that do that, to start looking at the, the glass half full instead of half empty of what the other guy is saying, mm -hmm. they end up getting better benefit from the technology faster. And there's so much dissonance in, in large organizations, obviously, and many, many agendas. You don't have that nearly as much or at all sometimes in smaller organizations or, or startups. So what we're trying to do is identify those areas where there is alignment between IT and the business, where there is alignment even within IT between let's say the DevOps crowd and mm -hmm. you know the, the, the traditional sort of governance crowd, et cetera. And those are the folks that seem to be really driving value in this business. Yeah, well for Hadoop to really take off, mm -hmm. I mean it can't just sit in the startup community. And right. I think if you look at, do you know what, have you ever heard of Corba? Or DCE? Yeah, DCE. Okay, sure. so yes, and but but, yes, but, 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 but <laughs> well, but no, but, but if I you know if I, had a, if I had if I had a thousand people in, in in this room and I were to ask that question, mm. you know maybe two percent of the people would raise their hands mm. and know what they were. And the reason is these are distributed technologies that yeah. died on the vine because they were too hard. Right. The difference with Hadoop is there are billions of dollars of investment going in to hide that complexity to make it the Unix operating system underneath a, a graphical yeah. interface whether it's for data integration, whether it's for data prep, whether it's for data analytics, whether it's for building new kinds of applications, we're going to see that complexity you know, get hidden away by lots of investment that are done by the startups that then get consumed into the mainstream enterprise. Well, the, the whole big data theme is a, is a real tailwind for Informatica, it's interesting. Um, you guys have been in the right place for a while and now the, the right time has come. So. Really interested um, to follow you guys and, and, the, and, the, and the contributions you're making this, to this community. So we got to end it there, Todd. Thanks very much for oh, coming on theCUBE. Thank really you very much, it's been a great. All right, keep it right there, everybody. Jeff and I will be back with our next guest right after this. We're live from Big Data NYC. This is theCUBE.